Hello everyone. In this video, we will learn about atomic structure. Uh, atomic structure, as the name explains, it is a structure of the atom, what atom is made of. So molybdenum is an element, and what you see here is the information of one atom of molybdenum. One atom of MO. So every single atom of molybdenum will have the atomic number 42 mass number 95.94 this is a symbol so i mean this is the basic card that you see that kind of represents molybdenum so we need to make sure that we understand everything that we see on this card uh, of course here is the name it says molybdenum uh, this is the atomic number and atomic number is the number of protons it means how many protons do we have in molybdenum in one atom of molybdenum Atomic number is also represented by the letter Z. So when if you say Z or A minus Z, that means it is mass minus atomic number. So Z represents atomic number or the number of protons. MO is the symbol of molybdenum. Uh, when we talk about the symbols of elements, we can use one capital letter or one capital second small letter. So either you have again one capital letter or one capital second small letter. They represent one element. So for molybdenum, we are using one capital and one small letter. We call it atomic symbol. And then at the bottom right here, what you see is the atomic mass, which is the average mass of all the isotopes of molybdenum. Um, so the atomic mass that you see here uh, is uh, 95.94. And uh, as I mentioned earlier, that uh, atomic mass is represented by A. So this is A. And this is Z. Now, what is atomic number? Atomic number is the number of protons. Okay, an element is defined by the number of protons. So, number of protons is basically the identity of the element. If you change the number of protons, the element will change. So, if, if I say that there is some element who has the atomic number 11 or who has 11 protons, you will just go to the periodic table and look for number 11 and you say, you know what, this element is sodium because atomic number is uh, 11 for sodium. So basically, as I'm repeating, that atomic number or number of proton is the identity of fingerprint of the element. If the number of proton is different, it is a different element. Atoms are neutral. Neutral means no positive, okay, no charge. That's what the neutral means. So atoms are neutral. So for an atom, the number of protons has to be equal to the number of electrons. Because I hope you understand that the protons have a positive charge on them and electrons have a negative charge on them. So if protons are positive and electrons are negative, they got to be equal to get the atom neutral. So if um, it's the mass of one proton is 1 amu, uh, the mass of electron is not really 1 amu. It is much, much, much smaller than 1 amu. Uh, it's almost close to zeros because it's 1 over 1836. Okay, so let me explain that again. Uh, so mass of one proton is one amu. What is amu? Amu means atomic mass unit. So mass of proton is one amu, but mass of one electron is one divided by 1836 amu. It is so small that it is almost negligible. But what I was explaining here earlier was that the charges are opposite. So they got to be the same number to get the atom neutral. So what is an isotope? Atoms are the same element with different number of neutrons. Okay, but first of all, where the neutrons are, we have phosphorus 1531. So this is the atomic number. Okay, this is the atomic mass. Atomic <coughs> number is the number of protons must be equal to the number of electrons. To get the neutrons, I will do A minus Z. So I am going to do 31 minus 15. So the neutrons will be 16. Okay, so this is how we calculate electrons, protons, and neutrons for any particular element. But if I have different masses, you know, lithium, atomic number is not going to change because the number of protons are not going to change. So they are all three. That means if the, as long as the atomic number is three, that means I am talking about lithium. But you see that the atomic masses are different for all three lithiums. 
Now let's calculate electrons, protons, and neutrons for that. So protons three, electrons three. To calculate the neutrons, I do six minus three. All right, so which is equal to three. Here protons three. Of course, you know the atomic number is three. Electrons three because it's neutral, and the neutrons you do seven minus three, so it's four. And here when I do the neutrons, it's five, right? Eight minus three. So do you see that they have different number of neutrons? You have four, five, and three. So different number of neutrons means that it is an isotope. That all these are the isotopes of lithium. Okay, all these are the isotopes of lithium because they have the same atomic number but different atomic mass, and that is the definition of an isotope. So. where does the mass come from the mass comes from the nucleus so inside the nucleus for this particular element i see that it has three protons and three neutrons right here i see how many three protons okay but i see four neutrons here i have three protons 1 2 3 4 five neutrons so do you see that the number of protons will not change because it is the identity of the element Okay, now you, I want you to pause this and see who has three protons. Which element has three protons? It is lithium. Lithium is who has three protons. Lithium has three protons, so it is three protons but different number of neutrons. So this is the definition of an isotope. Isotopes are the atoms of the same element with different atomic mass or different number of neutrons. Sometimes we write isotope just with the element and the mass. We don't use anything else, so we can just say lithium eight. Whenever the any number comes with a symbol, it is the mass of that element. It will not be the atomic number. The atomic number you can go and get it from the periodic table. So lithium seven, you know, or lithium nine. These are all the masses of the lithium. So if we have that many masses, like I have lithium seven, eight, and nine, then which lithium am I going to put in the periodic table? Okay, I need to. So, to, if I have multiple masses, I will do an average mass. You know, the weighted average of naturally occurring isotopes. So, I do. So, isotope is something that naturally present in nature. You know, it is the same element, but that you pick up one carbon, mass twelve. You pick up another carbon, mass thirteen. You pick up another carbon, mass fourteen. But their chemical behavior is the same. Okay, they have same chemical properties. But they have diff. They may have different physical properties because the mass is different. Though, so their physical properties can be different. But just when you are dealing with them or reacting with them, you don't know with the, which carbon has which mass. They all behave the same, but they have different mass numbers. Uh, that means they have different phys chem physical properties. So what I do is I randomly take a sample of hundred atoms of carbon, and I find out that how many of hundred have the mass twelve. How many of hundred have the mass thirteen, and how many of hundred have the mass fourteen? Once I know that abundance, I will take the mass of the isotope and multiply it by the natural abundance, and then you simply add them all together and divide it by hundred. Okay, so this is one way of doing the uh, mass of the isotopes. So let's calculate the average atomic mass of isotopes. We have magnesium here. The average atomic mass. So whatever the mass that we see in the periodic table is taken as an average of all the naturally occurring isotopes. So what we see on the periodic table is not the mass of one atom. We have taken an average. We have taken all the magnesiums and taken an average of their all isotopes. So for example, in nature, magnesium has three isotopes. Magnesium could be 24. Magnesium could be 25. Magnesium could be 26. So we collect a, a random sample of magnesium, and we find out that 78.99% of magnesium have the mass 24, and 10% of the magnesium have the mass 25. 11% is this. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that percentage and multiply it by the mass, the mass that is given to me in the question. So this mass will be given to you in the question. So multiply the two together. Okay. Then. Divide them by hundred. Add them all together and divide it by hundred. So I hope you understand how to calculate average atomic mass of isotopes. As I was giving you an example here too, I will uh, just let's use another page. 
you have a hydrogen, you know, one and one, hydrogen one and two, hydrogen one and three. So let's say it is 75% uh, right here. It is 15% uh, right here. And what is left now? 10%? So 10 percent right here because our total has to be equal to 100. so what i will do is i'll take one multiplied by 0 0.75 you can calculate the percentage plus two multiplied by 0 0.15 plus you know, this is one isotope this is the other isotope and three multiplied by 0 0.10 and then I will add them all together, and then my answer will be A and U. You know, whatever the answer is, uh, it will be equal to the unit I will use is one A and U. A and U means atomic mass unit. This is a unit of one atom. When we calculate the mass of one atom, we use the unit of atomic A and U. So this is uh, what you need to learn about isotopes. You know, what is the atomic structure? How to calculate electrons, protons, and neutrons? If the number of neutrons are different, then they are called isotopes. So they have a different mass, and then what do we do with it? How do we calculate every atomic mass of isotopes? Uh, this is uh, it for today, and then uh, next we will learn about radioactive decay. So, all right, everybody, I'll talk to you later. Bye.